Hola, my name is Sarah Briggs, and today we're going to learn about tapas um, and their historical and cultural significance to Spain. So, first we're going to learn a little bit about their history and what exactly tapas are and where the name came from. Uh, then we're going to learn a little bit about the tapas experience and how it differs based on the region. And then we're finally going to experience a tapas tasting at home because unfortunately where I'm staying um, for vacation, there aren't any tapas bars near here, even though that's more of the authentic experience. So we're just going to replicate it at home. So tapas comes from the verb tapar, which means to cover. Um, so who or where tapas originated from? There's numerous theories. Um, but the most common one that's agreed on is that they started in the Andalusian region, which is in the south, located here, this red part, this is Spain, right here is Andalusia. Yep. Taverns in this region started serving tapas as a way to kind of cover a person's either beer, wine, or sherry, so no object would go in it, whether it be flies or just, I don't know, maybe something falling from the building. <laughs> so they originally started looking a little more like so. If you notice, this is just a mini replica because the ham is small, but top was originally, here's the Iberico ham, and here's a little red one. So this was the main purpose. They covered the drink. Then, tavern owners also noticed that they helped, you know, food, giving them this little bit of food helped to absorb the alcohol, and that meant, you know, less drunken debauchery from the farmers and the workers who were coming in for their drinks after a long day's work. And in the beginning, tapas were free, you know. It what I just showed you was very simple, um, and they would just give that a little bit of out. Then tavern owners were like, hmm, we can make money off this. So they started charging, and that's more, that brings us to like the tapas experience today. Now, depending on where you go, they can be cheap, you know, like in Spain, like maybe two, three euros, or they can be pretty pricey. But Overall, you know, now it's a common experience is to pay for them. Now, today the tapas experience varies based on where in Spain you go. In the northern region of Basque, it's more of a bar hopping experience, and you'll find them to be more like little mini appetizers, like the Basque Pinto Amon Ibirico, which is the Pinchos Ibirico ham. So, which is basically, looks like this, is a thin slice of the Iberico ham on bread with a toothpick. Very easy to make. I used, I got the Iberico ham from Wegmans, and I paired it with just baguette bread that I put in the oven to harden. Now, when you're serving this, it's best to serve this type of tapas with red wine. Now in order to make tortilla de patatas you need six large eggs, one to two large onions. They can either be thinly sliced or chopped. I prefer them chopped just because I don't like the thin slice of onion. You need two pounds of russet potatoes which is equals about three russet potatoes. They need to be peeled, and they need, what you do is you have them. And what you would do is, with a russet potato like this, you first would wash it, peel it, and then you would need to have it first down vertically. And then you're going to cut them, the halves, into thin slices like so. 
Then, then you'll need about half a cup of olive oil. You'll need a quarter of a teaspoon of, I'm using ground black pepper. There's, you're supposed to use freshly ground. However, I did not get that. And you're supposed to use one and a half teaspoons of salt. Yes, this is salt. It's a f interesting story why the salt is in a salt bag. But anyway, there it is. So the first thing is you toss the potatoes with a half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter of a teaspoon of the black pepper. Now what I did is I just kind of used a spoon to kind of stir it in a little bit. I actually split it up where I did a quarter of a teaspoon of the salt at the top and then stirred around and then I added another quarter of a teaspoon. So I just broke it up so everything got where it should be. So after you toss the salt and the pepper on the potatoes in a nine inch cast iron, like so, you're going to heat a quarter cup of the olive oil over medium heat. And then I'm going to add potatoes and cook, tossing occasionally with a spatula. Now, while I'm cooking the potatoes, I am also going to be cooking the onions. So I'm going to be using two tablespoons of olive oil. And this one is going to be on medium-low heat. And then I will be sauteing the onions for about 20 minutes until they are very soft and slightly golden. Make sure that you are stirring the onions as well, occasionally. Oops. Not bad. Alright, so I'm going to leave this be and check on my potatoes. Now, when you're doing the potatoes, try to avoid clumping. However, it is not the end of the world if they clump, but just try to avoid them clumping too much. So while the potatoes and the onions are finishing cooking, I am going to actually add a quarter of a teaspoon of the salt. It's a little more, but... And then a quarter of a teaspoon of the gra the black pepper. Like so. Hello. And now I'm going to beat it. So that the onions are slightly golden. I am now going to add them to the egg mix and stir them in with the eggs. So I'm just stirring in the onions. Just so now I'm going to be heating the skillet over low heat. And then I add the potato mix into the egg mix. Yeet. There we go. And I am going to gently stir in the potatoes into the egg mix. Unfortunately, some of them just, they clumped a little bit. However, I still think these will taste very good. So now I'm pouring this into the hot skillet. Gonna spread this around a little bit. Obviously, right now it's a little lumpsided. 
that's actually this. It smooths out a little bit. And we are going to let this cook for about eight minutes until the bottom is slightly golden. What I'm going to do is I put a, pan, a plate that's a little bit bigger than the pan. Put this on top, like so. Very careful. One, two, three. And then I slide it back in. Now, oops, I lost a little bit of potatoes, but that's okay. Hey, and here's the finished product of this Andalusian specialty, tortilla de patatas. It is best served at room temperature or warm with a nice chilled glass of sherry. It can be chilled or on the rocks. Salute.